944 guys, it's Tim, CRE, San Diego again, talking to you, trying to learn you some more about 944 Porsches. Um, I just was talking to some of the guys on the Facebook group, uh, which if you're not a member of, you should join. It's uh, Facebook, Porsche 944, no spam. Really cool group, lots of knowledgeable guys on there, and a few knuckleheads. Uh, but uh, they're generally pretty helpful, friendly guys, and they'll steer you straight as far as advice on your cars. Anything you want to do to your 944, somebody there has probably already done, so you can get advice. Um, everything, procedures, tools to use, what you should look out for here, what you should do uh, while you're in there. But uh, today I want to do, uh, um, talk about the counterbalance shaft rigging because um, uh, some of the guys were asking questions about that. So uh, I'm going to simplify it for you. You only need to remember two things when you're doing the counterbalance shafts. It's something that a lot of newer guys mess up and they get real bad vibrations. Super bad for your fuel rail, for your oil suction tube in your pan, for your dipstick, especially if you have a early dipstick tube that's not secured, it'll just shake the heck out of your engine components and cause failure. So let's take a look at the factory manual. Let's take a look at some uh, balance shaft gears that I have rigged up, and I'll show you what I was uh, what I was talking about. So, by the way, that is a kick-ass 1969 Spa, 24 hours of Franker Champ. So it's at the Spa racetrack. It's a beautiful poster, isn't it? Good, good. Got to know your Porsche history, guys. Makes it makes it the whole thing, whole experience more fun. So, here's a factory manual, and uh, the upper and, and lower. Uh, counterbalance shafts are what we're going to be talking about. They have a real tight relationship with your crank, okay? We don't care. They don't care about your camshaft timing. They care and they need to be set in relationship to your crank, all right? Um, they spin twice as fast as the crankshaft. So when you're doing 6,000 RPM on the crank, you're registered on your tack, these little, these little guys are doing 12,000 RPM, so they got to be set right, right? Are they going to make a hell of a vibration uh, you know a couple teeth out can make a big difference so um, upper and lower and um, let's uh, talk about the front end of the gears here so here's a couple that are that I've kind of set up I always mark my gears like this with yellow paint so you can see you know if I've been in there you'll know it because they're they're marked yellow so this guy right here um, is set up for being a uh, um, a lower counterbalance shaft one right here. Um, earlier I said uh, you need to pay attention to two things and two things only when you rig these uh, these gears up, okay? And that, the first one is the keyway on the balance shaft always goes up, okay? If this shaft is able to spin by itself, it's going to orient itself that way because of the weights. It's just going to spin and, and put the keyway to the top for you. So the woodruff key always goes to the top, okay? When you are doing the upper, the upper gear, you'll see that there's a there's a possibility, sorry, of putting your uh, um, your Woodruff key in this slot or in this slot, right? There's two slots that go in there. The other one's going to be occupied by this tang, this tang right here on the uh, cover, right? So if you're doing the upper uh, balance shaft gear, the keyway, the Woodruff key always goes up. And then just pay attention to your O right here, okay? I don't know if you can see that pretty well, huh? The O goes up on the upper one. Tough to remember, right? On the upper one, the O goes up. On the lower gear, the O goes down. That's all you need to remember, those two things. Keyway always goes up. The upper one, the O goes up. The lower one, the O goes down. That'll naturally uh, force you to put the um, tang with this left over here into this lower slot right here. Then you should have the O showing up. Come sa. You should have the O showing up in that round window right there, see? And I always mark my gear on the back side, and I always mark the uh, the rear belt cover with yellow paint, and I do a mark on the front too. So even if it's installed way up there and I'm working from the bottom of the car, I can still see that reference mark on the outside. That'll make the job, anything to do with the counterbalance shafts, easier for anybody to do that comes along after me, whether it's the customer, whether it's a new shop, you moved cross country, whatever, okay? And then here's your bottom one right here. So again, keyway goes, keyway goes up, and then this is gonna be oriented down, same marks for reference later, and you can see 
uh, inside. It's pretty tough to see on this guy here. I'll, I'll take this cover off, but see that O is going to be in this little rectangle window here and not the, uh, the round window like up on the top on this upper one. Okay. So um, these things get nailed down with um, 33 foot pounds, like everything in the front of the car, and including the, um, uh, the tensioner, um, the tying belt tensioner, whether you've got uh, the, uh, the automatic spring loaded one like this or not, which is absolutely uh, missing its spring right now, by the way. But the reason I'm pointing that out is because here's the cool tool to use for tightening down your uh, counterbalance shaft gear sprockets here. This drops into the two holes, holds that in place, and gives you access to get your 17 millimeter wrench in there to crank that thing down to 33. This tool also will fit right in here for your tensioner. You see that? It goes right into the tensioner if you have uh, that type of tensioner. There's uh, several different types of tensioners. Some have these holes, some don't. Some are made out of cast iron, like this piece of uh, heavy stuff, and some are even aluminum. Um, and so uh, this tool is a cool, I think this one, this one is built by uh, Sir Tools, S-I-R. I like it better than the Ironworks tool because it's, it's a, it fits both, uh, you know, uh, the tensioner if you have that style and it fits the uh, sprockets here if you have those guys. And it's got a longer handle on it, which makes it a lot easier for little guys like me to, uh, to put some force on that thing and overcome the spring on the tensioner so we can lock that thing down and get it ready to work with. Let me see if I have an aluminum right over here too, by the way. Yeah, this tensioner right here, behind the, hiding behind the ladder, is actually an aluminum later one. So pretty cool little weight savings right there, just a little tidbit that they come in two or three different forms, those tensioners, okay? So uh, to summarize on the uh, balance shaft sprocket gears here, pulleys, whatever you wanna call them, uh, and I do like standardization of terms so that everybody's on the same page we don't get confused there's only two things to remember right guys the keyway always goes up and then on the upper one o goes up on the lower one o goes down pretty simple huh and that's got to be timed right with your um, crankshaft and i should mention that too when you do set the timing on the crank don't go by the little mark on the cam gear it's not accurate enough uh, i'd really like you to go back to the back of the engine and look down through the sight hole in the clutch bell housing in the back and get that OT line spot on to its little tang marker so that you know you're putting your counterbalance shafts up here uh, perfectly timed. We don't want to be a half tooth or a tooth off on those ever. They need to be right spot on, okay? So pretty simple stuff, huh? You should never mess those up again. Pay attention to them and um, you'll be happy, happy. And check out that tool. I think that'll make your life um, uh, a little bit easier, all right? Take care, man.